Hey masters, welcome back to Young Media. Today I have a very interesting video about the expat expression basics. We're gonna learn what is an expat, the two different types that we have, which are absolute and um, relative expats, right? And also some di dynamic strategies to find elements with different strategies. For example, looking for the text, uh, in case it contains something or using an and or expressions and so on, please. So watch this video until the end because you are going to learn a lot from this. So let's go ahead and start with the expat basic explanation. As you can see here, we have different expats available in order to use, right? We have order selectors, we have descendant selectors, uh, siblings, uh, jQuery style. I don't know, a lot of expressions over here that we can use, but um, I'm going to try to give you the basic understanding of this so you can come here to this uh, sheet, for example, and just use it uh, with with the basic understanding of this. So what is an expat? Basically, an, ex an expat is um, it is a syntax or a language for finding any element on the web page using the XML path expression. All right. Um, expat is used to find the location of any element on a web page using the HTML DOM structure. So, um, we have two types of uh, expats in uh, in order to use, right? The first one is uh, the the absolute expat, and then we have the relative expat, right? It's, that's that's amazing. Um, well, the, the absolute expat is that is that direct way to find the element. But the disadvantage of the absolute expat is that if there are any changes made in the path of the element, then the expat fails, of course, right? So the key characteristic of uh, the absolute expat is that it begins with the single forward slash slash which is this one over here, right? So uh, just to give you an example of this, um, I have this website over here, which is my favorite, saucedemo.com, right? <laughs> and I have this example, as you can see over here. As I, as I told you before, the the, the absolute expat is gonna start with the this particular forward slash at the beginning. And the another characteristic is that we have to target the element, but also we have to set the full path where it is located. In this case, we have to target the HTML uh, tag over here, which is the first one, the very, very first one. And then we have to look inside of the body and look for the different diffs, go ahead uh, in, in its descendants and look for the input at the end, right? Let's imagine that tomorrow, some of these diffs are deleted. Well, in this case, this selector is not working anymore. Therefore, there is going to be a lot of rework and refactoring work uh, needed to do. So uh, this is the first kind or type of uh, expat expression, which is absolute expat. But we have another type, which is the um, relative expat. OK, how it works. Basically, uh, the common expat structure will be two forward slash, right? That's uh, the main uh, characteristic of this one. And it actually means, uh, means this to select the current node, okay? Then we have to look for the tag name. In this case, I want to, for example, um, look for, let me just think about this. I'm gonna be looking for this diff login box, okay? That's the, that's the first example that I wanna show you. So I'm going to be looking for the tag. In this case, it is going to be the diff. That's good. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, well, we're going to have to look for the attribute. So I'm going to come here. And you can see that uh, this diff has the class locking box. So the attribute here is going to be the class. So I have to come here and inside of uh, square brackets, I have to add the at symbol, right? Which means a select attribute. And then we have to specify the attribute that I want to look. So now, as you can see, the diff is actually, a, we have this selector, which is selecting all the diffs that has classes. That's basically what is happening right now. But now I want to look for a specific class, so I, I can use this syntax over here, which is equal and, uh, well, ticks. 
and over here I can specify the string that I want to look. In this case, I want to look for the login box over here. Mm -hmm. And now you can see that I have only one element using a relative path. I am not looking for the whole path of, <laughs> of, of the document and I'm using this class attribute to find this particular uh, value, right? Which is login box. Now we can merge or mix uh, the absolute and the relative path over here. So let's imagine that I want to look for the form, which is the descendant. So I, I can do this. Then I can look for the diff. Okay, now I have a, let me check, uh -huh. and I can now look for the input. Why it is targeting two elements? Because basically we have the same diffs over here, and it is looking two nodes with the same structure, and of course it is locating two different elements over here. But that's the basic, the very basic structure. Now, you can tell me how I can target only the password uh, selector over here. Well. You can come here and look for another attribute that you can use just to target the, that particular input. Let me just give you this example. You can use the same strategy and look for a particular attribute, all right? Um, let's imagine that uh, I want to use the type, all right, which is this one, and I want to look for the password value. So if I come here and I look for the password, now we only have one input selected because we are making sure that the input that I want is this one over here, right? The password one. And, and if I want to change the password to the username, I just have to come here and look for the type or I don't know. Yeah, the type, which is in this case text. Yeah, so I can come here and change password to test text. I'm sorry. And there it is. That's a basic example of how you can merge a relative expat with an absolute tech expat, right? And that's uh, very good. So now that I un we understand the, the two types available, uh, I think that I can start uh, teaching you some basic strategies to uh, map dynamic elements. I have shown you this one, the first one, which is a very basic expat. So you can do this very quick, right? but also we have another strategy for example the contains strategy so uh, the contain feature has an ability to find the element with partial text as shown in in this example that i'm gonna give you so i'm gonna be looking for now the input itself mm -hmm. and um let's imagine that i'm gonna be using um, i'm sorry no in this case i'm not gonna uh, look for a particular a tag. In this case, I'm going to be looking for everyone. This symbol or this uh, syntax that you're uh, looking right now in the in the console, it is a way to uh, look for every single element that we have in the HTML, right? So as you can see, it is going to be looking for every tag that we have. But now we're going to be filtering this using the contains function, okay? So I'm going to come here and I'm going to uh, use the bracket, the, the square brackets. And I'm going to be using the uh, function contains over here. Now that's good. And we have to open, uh, I'm sorry, this, uh, this symbol. So I'm not sure how this is the parentheses, right? Yeah, the parentheses. And we have to look, for example, for a particular attribute. Let's imagine that uh, I want to look for, uh, um, let me check for the placeholder of this input, right? I am not specifying the tag, but I want to look a tag that has the placeholder user. Actually, not the, the whole uh, value username, but just the, the one that contains the word user inside of the attribute placeholder, okay? So I'm gonna come here and um, I'm gonna look for the placeholder. Mm -hmm. Because that's the attribute that I want to look, right? And now I want to look for this particular string to see if it contains or if, if there is a tag that contains that particular value of placeholder. So I, I can do this. I use a comma and then look for that particular user string over here. That's the value that I'm looking. And as you can see, it is targeting one element. 
I am not specifying the tag, but I'm looking for a single tag that contains the placeholder and inside of uh, the value, or actually the value has to contains the user word inside. And that's a very interesting uh, approach, right? And I just wanted to uh, present to you this, uh, well, kind of approach in case you need it. That's good, right? Let's continue with another uh, dynamic strategy. And it will be a or and and, right? And, and I think that you have seen this before, but I want to review it again. Okay, let's go ahead and imagine that I'm gonna be looking again for every single tag in the, in the HTML document, right? But in this case, I am gonna be looking for, um, let, let's take a look of the inputs. I'm gonna be looking for um, the data test attribute over here. Okay, which is data test and um, I'm going to be looking for, uh, well, the value username, right? I'm sorry. Now it is actually targeting the only input that we have with that particular attribute and value, right? But now we can use an and right or an or so i'm gonna place an or here <laughs> and then i'm gonna be actually looking for another data test mm -hmm. that for example we can target the password over here just to give you this example right and i'm i'm gonna try to explain you right away what is happening <laughs> and as you can see right now we have two different locators right now in the in the DOM, right? Because we are telling uh, or actually using this expat expression that it is saying that find any element in the DOM, right? That has or the, uh, the data test username or the data test password. So in case of uh, it finds this one or this one, well, it is going to be finding an element. And you might be wondering, um, why this can be useful. Let's imagine that we have uh, uh, this selector over here and I want to have a backup of attribute. Let's imagine that we have the username over here and uh, we're going to be targeting it by data test and uh, I don't know, the placeholder username. So we can come here, placeholder username. Okay. Now, if tomorrow the, the data test uh, attribute changes to user name two, let me see what is not happening. It is not working. Uh, please, okay, it, it has to be in capital. Let's imagine that tomorrow the, this um, data test changes, right, to username two. Well, we have a backup of the placeholder which is username, right? And that's a, a common use that we can uh, use for to use this particular X, but I'm sorry, right? And that's a, a workaround that we have to back up our selectors, I think. And obviously we have a lot of other users, uses, I'm sorry. But also we can use the and a kind of condition, right? A logical condition. And uh, let's imagine that we have username, right? and the placeholder username as well. In this case, it is finding the element, right? Cause uh, both conditions are true. We're finding the da data test username and the placeholder username. And, I, and we are using this particular operator to check if both are true. In case we have a username two over here, well, it is not gonna be finding any element in the website cause of course, one of them is not present. And that's a, well, um, kind of tricky explanation of or and end. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's continue with the fourth one. I think that we have another strategy with, which is starts with function. I'm gonna try to give you an introduction. Basically, um, start with function uh, finds the element whose attribute value changes on refresh or any operation in the website. Let's imagine that we have um, an element that changes dynamically, like ID message one, two, or uh, when we refresh, we have message three, four, five, or something like that. We can look for an element with starts with, okay? 
Um, so um, let's go ahead and it is something similar like contains, but let's. I'm gonna try to give you this example. I'm gonna be looking for the input again, and um, well, I'm gonna use the start with function, which is start with, and then we have to look, for example, for the class mm -hmm, with the attribute value as input. Mm -hmm. It is not working. Let me check why it is not working. Um, class input. Uh, okay, I see why why it is not working. Mm, not working too. <laughs> Let me check what what is happening. this happened when it starts. It should be uh, yeah. There it is. It was my 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 fault. As you can see here, well, I'm using this input. I'm looking for the input uh, uh, tag in the in the DOM, right? And I'm using the starts with a function to look for a class that started with input. And as you can see, it doesn't matter if we, it is error or it is a, a, a I don't know another class, but it actually has a class that it's a start thing with input. And that's a, that's an, an interesting um, well approach to find an element that changes every single time when you refresh the website, for example, right? That's another approach that you can have. And uh, I think that I have a last one, which is the text approach, right? We can look for a tag um, targeting or looking for its text. So for example, let's imagine that I want to look for this H4 tag but I'm going to be looking for this text that it has inside. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to be looking for every single tag in the DOM, right? Which has the text function, but it is going to be looking for the value password for all users. And you can, as you can see, it is looking for that particular text password for all users and we are not specifying the, the tag name or something like that. It is just targeting the element by the text. And guys, I think that I have covered the basics ones and let me know in the comment sections if you want, in the comment section, if you want to, uh, well, take a look of other kind of expat uh, expressions and if you need uh, any kind of help with them. I've tried my best guys, it is a kind of tricky uh, topic to discuss and explain, but I, tr I did my best, I, I, I really did. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching the video, please let me know in the comment section below if you like it or if you didn't like. Um, please subscribe and let a like and see you in the next one, bye bye.